Welcome back. All right, are you ready to paint some more flowers? So in the uh, last one we just did, we did some of these. If you haven't taken that one yet, then go back and watch the video because these were really fun and very, very easy to do. Had a great time with those. There's also more in this series to come. And if you want to take a full class to do a full composition, then by all means, go over to JacquelineJacks.com and take my floral class because it's really, really fun. Anyway, we're going to do this one, um, well, parts of it anyway, and kind of like go through some of my files to, I don't know, just show you some more things you can do with your brushes, some more interesting uh, really loose flowers. Actually, why don't we just start with this? Because this is so simple to do. Oh my goodness, this one's crazy simple. So I have a bunch of brushes here with me. I've got my watercolors. I've got uh, three different uh, things of water. One for blues, one for yellows, and one for just a clear water. Uh, what brush to use? What brush to use? I mean, this is really about the spatter, you know, this is really about just the randomness. So this isn't necessarily, that's my husky, by the way, you can literally use pretty much anything to lay the color down here for the petals or for the stems. You probably just either the point of your brush, or you could get a flat brush and just uh, use that. I'm going to use this two number two Escoda Prado from the Fabio Cambranelli signature series. You can just get this brush though. It's a, it's a beautiful brush. I'll link it up in the description box, but in any case to get something very loose, just don't even start with wet paper. By the way, this is very cheap. Canson um, Excel paper. It's like nothing paper. It's just so inexpensive for these tutorials. I'm going to use this though, because, um, this is just going to show you how random this can actually be. I mean, you can like splatter. Let's just for the sake of it, grab some of this, uh, violet and we'll get it nice and nice and wet. And literally let's just splatter. And then we're just going to kind of rock this around like this, get some color on the page. The more random, the better. Get a lot of color. This is actually really fun to do. I mean, literally you could sit here and make these all day. This, this is probably these flowers I'm doing are the most relaxing thing you'll ever do in watercolor by far. They're just so relaxing. Um, so then go ahead and just go crazy. I'm making a mess. I'm going to have to clean this all up. I probably should have done this as the last one, but that's okay. So we got that. Now take a spray bottle. We try and wipe some of this up here. And ready? Bam. Just hit the spray bottle. Now the best papers are going to do this so much better. But if you look really closely, because the paper wasn't wet and the randomness of your spray, depending on how quick it is, how, how well the spray just goes, it's going to determine this, these loose edges. And how cool is that though? It's so cool, right? I mean, literally I'm going to kind of, I don't have my paper. Um, tape down so we're going to use this so I can still work on it. So now it's starting to break apart. This was the, um, what color did I use? This was 474 violet. I will link it below, um, in the description box for you. And I'm literally taking some over it. You can see it's granulating, which I love. And I'm just going to kind of rough in a really cool stem that just matches the rest of this. And I'm going to add a little bit just so that you can see that if you didn't get the effect you wanted, you could add some more color into this um, to kind of like define the edges. But I just love the way it turned out. I, I really don't want to mess with it. But 
I'm really thrilled with it. But you could. You could do all kinds of things, but this is just this is just awesome. I love it. <laughs> um, for the stem, let's take a little bit of this color so I can show you how to mix on paper. And I'm just going to draw this down just like that with my Escoda 2. And this is uh, just a beautiful brush. I love this brush. It's a Prado. Um, and then I'll just take a little cerulean and starting at the base, we're going to draw that down. Look at how beautiful that is. It's mixing color on paper. And then I'm just going to kind of push it out into the base a little bit, just, just for some added interest, dip it back into my cerulean and let a few of these things kind of draw out in the blue. Mm, smear a little bit over on the side here so you can have a nice little shot of blue. I mean, are we literally in five minutes? We're six minutes and we've already got a beautiful composition. Now you could fiddle um, and kind of scratch some of this blue paint more into this um, if you wanted to, and it would be divine, right? You literally can, but I mean, you can also just leave it exactly the way it is. I'm not going to go crazy because we could be here. This would be more for our class. And as far as backgrounds, if you take the class, you're going to get a ton of really great, amazing backgrounds as well. We're going to leave the background alone because if I do backgrounds now, it's totally going to take up all of the time where we, where we could be doing flowers. But there we go. Now, look, that's one version compared to the other version. So here's the one that um, I showed you before. And here's our new version, which is just amazing. And I absolutely love it. It's so, so pretty. Ugh. It's just gorgeous and it hasn't even dried yet. It's going to continue to dry and just do amazing things. Can't wait. All right, let's go on to the next one, shall we? Hey there. So I'm back again with some more great, easy flowers for you to do. Keeping it loose, making sure that you um, don't get too serious. <laughs> so, so far, well, this is a piece I'm working on for one of the watercolor classes that I have over on JacquelineJacks.com. I just wanted you to see it. It's almost finished. We've got some more things to do on it, but this is the type of thing that um, the whole pieces from start to finish we're doing inside the watercolor classes so you might want to consider taking the watercolor class if you like the way that i paint um some of the things that uh, we've already done in this series are these beautiful abstract flowers and i'm really really excited because um Gosh, you know, there's so many flowers to do. I, I just think that we, we will never, literally never run out of them because there's so many nice ones. So let's pick another one, shall we? Um, this is really interesting. I kind of really love this, but this is going to take a lot longer to do. So we'll do this on a separate video, maybe, or we'll put it in a watercolor class. How about a cornflower? This is kind of interesting. I don't know if you've ever done these before, but we could do a couple of these. As our next flower so how would we do this um you know an easy way to do this would be with a flat brush we could do one with a flat brush we can do one just in case you don't have a flat brush with one of these brushes like a striper this one is a size four versatile um it's you would this is like either a liner or a striper they're, they're called many different things <laughs> but anyway i love versatile brushes these are beautiful and this is an escoda prado a three-quarter inch um but you know again use whatever you have to do this i mean you could you could basically finger paint some of this stuff you know what i mean i i could probably make this shape with my finger you probably could i could probably even like get something like the back of a brush and strike these out but um 
And you can even use something with a point. Maybe we'll try a couple of different ways here. Why don't we take a flat brush, a um, one of these, and perhaps a round brush. This is a size 12 Aqua Elite Princeton Long Round. You guys have seen me use this one a lot because it's got a really nifty point on it, but pretty much all my brushes have points on them, you know? But this is a good brush to use for something like this because it's going to give us a lot of like good solid color. This is going to give us a lot of good solid color. And so is this actually. So where do we start? Well, let's do one with the um, with the flat brush first. So I'm going to grab a little bit of let's use what have I got here? Ultramarine. Okay. Let's get our ultramarine nice and wet. Use a little ultramarine in this one. Ooh, that's nice. This is on dry paper. You don't need to wet the paper for this. I'm just getting plenty of color. And start there. So I'm just gonna kind of give us a little bit of that round shape, leaving some of the white space. And just gonna take Cornflower is really easy because they're just really random shapes. And I'm literally just going to stripe myself out like this. And what I'm doing is I'm just tapping my brush and I'm using the point, you know, like the, the thinness of this brush to establish these really neat cornflower lines. I'm just kind of tapping it out. Um, I mean, notice I'm not dragging it. I'm more tapping because I want it to be really, really random and I want to leave a lot of spaces in there. Now, what I could do is, for to save time, let me grab a second brush. So I'm going to get a second brush just because I want to add another color. Um, you can just rinse your brush out and maybe do all the blue first and then go back in and do another color. Let's add a little bit of Hmm. How about some Quinn magenta, if I have any left in here. And I'm just going to bring it in the side here. Pretty. And I don't want to cover my white space, so I'm actually going to get some of this on my brush. And I'll show you. I'm going to try and hit some of the areas that already have the blue just because or next right next to it. I don't want to destroy a lot of my white space. You're like, oh, cornflower is doing a pink. Yes, I know. But this is an abstract watercolor class. You could use different. We'll do the next one. We'll be all blues. How's that? I'm like talking to myself. <laughs> okay, there you go. Look at that. Beautiful. There's so many other things we could do with this, but for this, we're just going to leave it there. Okay. So let's leave these aside and we'll do the next one with this brush. So take this brush, dip it in my ultra and let's start with our little base and and strike out. I'm giving it a little curve underneath. And again, remember, loose. Don't try to be perfect. Don't like the the farther you are away, if you feel that you don't get a random look, the farther you are away, that's why they make those brushes with really long handles, the better your flower will actually be. The more you can keep yourself away from it. Like you are your own worst enemy when it comes to like you know, this kind of stuff. And I'm kind of also a big fan of connecting the dots. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll leave a lot of white space, but I'll try and look at the piece like it's one piece, right? Where I'm connecting things so that when I have those connections, I kind of start to have a really, really beautiful um, shape. And there you go. Ooh, I really like that. I actually don't want to even go anywhere else. I just want to do that. 
All right, so that's the benefit of having a really nice point. Um, now let's do one with this striper brush, shall we? Okay, let's see how the striper brush does. And again, it, this is why I love doing these things with you guys, because I can show you, you can really get a very similar effect with so many different brushes by so many different companies. So I started with just um, tapping to get some different white areas in there, and then I'm shaping the bottom. You can tell this one is a great brush, a Skoda Versatile size four. You see how much paint it holds. I'm actually thinking about um, ordering some more of these, you know. Uh, so I'm going to have this one striking some down like this. Boy, this just changes. Skoda makes the best brushes, can I just say? I mean, I have everything Princeton has to offer, and I love Princeton brushes, but... When it comes to a Skoda brushes, if you can afford a Skoda brushes, they're a bit more, but look at the results. It's crazy. I just love them. I'm currently trying to collect them. So if anybody would like to buy me a birthday present this year, that's what you should buy me. <laughs> you should buy me a Skoda brushes. So I'm using my striper and I'm just kind of striking out and making it nice and fluffy. Um, if you are having trouble with composition, I suggest you take my watercolor class because composition is a big ball game, right? In these things. I mean, if you feel like you really, it just doesn't come together and you just don't know, you can do like one flower on a page like this, but when it comes to like actually having uh, composition, that part just doesn't work, then definitely take my class. All right, that is so pretty, but I'm thinking I'm actually gonna take some of this cobalt blue, which I love, cobalt turquoise, and I'm just gonna mess this up a little bit just because I love, I love to do that. And this is just such a beautiful color. Now the um, flower is still very, very wet. And yes, it looked amazing on its own, but hey, this is a demo. This is my chance to play. It's gonna kind of give it a little shadowing with my cobalt. Oh, it's so pretty. Stop, I love it. Oh, don't you love this right now? It's so pretty. I'm just going to add a little bit into this flower too. Okay, moving on to the next flower. Um, so we did one with this beautiful long striper brush. This is the Versatile. These are so pretty. I love these brushes. We did uh, another one with the long round Princeton size 12 Aqua Elite. And we did our first one with the Escoda three quarter inch Prado. So this is interesting, right? Like looking at this, it's interesting to see um, if there is really like, is it the artist or is it the brush? You know what I mean? Because um, there are a lot of things like I couldn't do the curves probably with this brush as much. I can a little bit, but it's, it's harder, right? Like I have to really have a little more skilled hands to do the curves. Um, but I mean, look, it's possible. Actually, it's pretty cool looking. Every brush looks good. <laughs> That's really interesting. Just watching that. Okay, we're washing my brushes out. Um, yeah, this is so pretty. I love it. How else would I do this? Like if I wanted to do another one, I wonder if just for the sake of argument, if we could do it with this, this is a really, really different brush to use. So I'm just gonna try it since we're here. I know I'm daring like that. I'm daring like that. So I'll have to use the side of the brush to get this. 
And then, how would I do it? I think I would probably, because I'm doing like a smaller thing, I'm not using the entire brush. I'm kind of just like using parts of it. And I'm just going to try and see if I can drag it up. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I'm just going to wet it a little bit. Well, this would be like really different. Going to add a little more paint. And this really makes a very random look. I would, th you know, this is pretty cool. I like it. I think uh, it's it's going to sit there and not really look like it's part of this one. So I might actually have to go back in with a brush that is part of this, right? Like if this was by itself and I did it alone and I did all of the work this way, then it would be different. So I'm actually taking one of the other brushes back and I'm just kind of giving it that individual look because of the because the leaves are so sparse on the, the petals on the flower, I feel like it just doesn't look like it belongs here. And that has to do with composition. And that's just something for me, you know. Um, I also noticed that we lost a lot of our white space because I can't, I couldn't control that brush as much, which is a good thing that it happened here because now I can show you how to get some white space back. Let's see what happens if I just take a tissue and let it sop up some of that. See, I got some of my white space back. That's pretty cool. So then I can go back in with this brush and just hopefully keep some of our white space. It's not always going to be, it's not going to be exactly the same, but at least when it dries, I will have some areas in here that are much lighter than others. And I'm just kind of filling in a little bit just so that we connect, we connect these strands. Now it's very wet, so it's gonna do what it wants to do, but I like it still, I do. I'm gonna take a little shot of really, really bright upper rose and I'm just going to pop those in there just for fun. Just like it's a shadow. Just makes it look a little more interesting. And it mixes really nicely with the blue and gives us almost a lavender as I'm pulling it out. See the lavender? It's like a violet. It's very pretty. And because I'm mixing, this is called mixing on paper. Because I'm mixing on paper, um, it's never really the same, right? It's like, it's very, very different. Okay, so now let's just give that back. Lovely. All right, we're not going to do backgrounds today because that is going to take up too much time. And you can always get the backgrounds in my class for sure. Hope you guys like this tutorial. Stay for another one again soon. JacquelineJacks.com is my website and I really hope that you guys are enjoying these um, loose watercolors and I hope they're kind of saving your painting nights and you know giving you something to really enjoy. Happy painting guys!